Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wild Side with Wildlife SOS. And I'm Karthik Satyanarayan, co-founder and CEO of Wildlife SOS. Joining us today is someone who's a very versatile and passionate wildlife filmmaker, a photographer, a naturalist in every sense, and has worked on international wildlife documentaries with National Geographic, BBC, and many, many more production houses. He's also won uh, several prestigious awards for his documentary films. He's a dear friend and has been passionately supporting Wildlife SOS and our refuse ride campaign with valuable elephant footage that he shared with us. Welcome to the show, Kalyan. Great to see you. Great, Karthik. Happy to uh, be on the show and nice to see you after a long time. I know these are odd times, but I'd love to know how you're doing and I hope you're well and safe. All well and safe. It's a forced, uh, actually, I've, you know, for many years I've been thinking I need a sabbatical, you know. So it's a bit of a, a good forced sabbatical and uh, I have like a mountains of hard disks with footage. So it's just been lying around. So it's a good time. Uh, the time was really good in sorting out all that footage and uh, Let's see, I'm, I'm on top of things right now. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> Kalyan, you'd remember the last time we met was on the Wildlife Associates Founders trip in Ranthambur Tiger Reserve. It was so great to have you come and talk to the Wildlife Associates donors and our friends about your work. We really got lucky with the timing of your visit and you happened to be there. What have you been doing since then? Just before the lockdown, I had gone to Spiti to film snow leopards. And uh, I don't do well with cold. I, I, I think I can manage heat, but extreme cold is just not my thing. So uh, thankfully, uh, because Spiti is such a uh, kind of a remote area, the low Spiti in that cold for three months. <laughs> That's exciting that you've been working with snow leopards since you met us. That's incredible. That's right. Uh, actually, it's the small leopard straight from tigers. Wow. Kalyan, when you met us, you also gave us a private viewing of one of your recent productions, Wild Karnataka, narrated by none other than David Attenborough. And we all loved watching it. Can you tell our viewers about this film and where they can watch it? Yeah. So, I mean, this this kind of a, a, a personal project which took a life on its own. Um, you know, for many years, I've been doing films for, like you said, international broadcasters. And we mostly the films were for Western audiences, right? So at some point, we realized that, you know, we should make films for our own people, uh, show showcase our own wildlife to our own people, kind of celebrate the nature that we have. So that was the project. And because I'm based out of Karnataka, I thought it's a, it's a good starting point to showcase uh, uh, Karnataka itself. So it took, it took us about a team of 20 people, four years of filming. Um, a long process actually um, with uh, shoestring budgets and uh, yeah we got really lucky at the end because uh, I was able to use some of my contacts to pull in uh, Sir David Attenborough to narrate it you know he is 90 he just turned 94 and uh, he does only a couple of films every year so I was very like very honored to have him narrate the film um, and it's great uh, and, and what was really amazing for us was that uh, it, the film did really well you know, it's the first wildlife film to be uh, released in, in cinema in India. Uh, so that was a lot of, I mean, it actually was running. It was running till COVID came, by the way. And, and what we were also fortunate is that now we've done regional languages. So we've got it in Tamil, Telugu, um, Kannada and Hindi. Um, so hopefully it will reach out to larger audiences and rural areas who probably don't know who they are. That's amazing. Congratulations once again. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the National Geographic show on Wildlife SOS. It's called India's Jungle Heroes. I've seen one yeah. of the episodes. Yeah. It was incredible filming it. Uh, we filmed nonstop for three long months, day and night. And it, um, it's featured all of our staff, the Wildlife SOS hotline units, the teams getting into ambulances, getting out, uh, rescuing everything from crocodiles, from deep wells, to elephants, leopards, ti treating tigers and things like that. It really shows everybody out there what our teams are up to on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Yeah, and and how are you doing, by the way? How's your center running uh, along the, during the lockdown days and things? Thank you for asking, Kalyan. Um, things have been very, very stressful at this time due to the COVID situation. You know, it's been really challenging to administer food and medical supplies to the animals and to the staff. Also, you know, we've had to make sure our staff are well protected. Thankfully, the government categorized wildlife as well as an essential service. So our ambulances and our staff were able to move around and continue to help animals in distress. I have a question for you. You made a switch from uh, IT job, you know, where you were working with computers to a career in wildlife photography and filmmaking. Uh, what was the turning point for you? How did you make that switch? So I was always passionate about wildlife, you know, but obviously I come from a middle class family and uh, you know, I couldn't afford to go to uh, forests every weekend and thing. So I did my engineering. Um, I used to work in Yahoo. And this is this is the time there was no Google, Facebook, uh, all that. So everybody was using Yahoo. And, and actually, I had a very interesting job. A lot of people don't know this, but I, I was in, um, in charge of application security. So um, it was, you know, catching all the hackers. And I had, in fact, joined Yahoo a month after September 11th. So I was working closely with FBI, CIA, you know, tracking down Al-Qaeda, guys who were using emails to communicate and things. So that was great. Um, <clears throat> so I worked there in uh, IT for three years. And it's a bit like this sabbatical, you know. I, I thought, you know, let me take a break, um, you know, for a couple of months. So I said, you know, I've always wanted to spend time in the forest. So, so I started uh, spending time in a place called BR Hills, Bilgiri Rangan Hills, which you know. Um, and um, I started working with jungle lodges as a naturalist. Basically, they said three stay and, you know, you can just do your photography. Basically, that was 2005 is when I uh, did that. And uh, basically, I haven't come back from that sabbatical yet. <laughs> That's very inspiring. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will find this inspirational. Kalyan, you've co-founded a community called India Nature Watch, which is an online community. And you also co-founded Asia's largest nature photography festival called Nature in Focus. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about how photography about wildlife and forests and nature is becoming a tool to conserve nature? So photography, I mean, you know, there are two kinds of photography. And there are a lot of photographers who just go there and come back with the pretty pictures. Um, but one thing we have to do, uh, realize is because of social media platforms and, and things these days, and, and primarily because of photography, people are a lot more aware. You know, and, and even with Wild Karnataka film, that was, that was the key, right? Um, to showcase what wildlife we have, right? I tell a lot of photographers, I mean, when, if you go to a national park or whatever, don't just take the pretty stuff. You know, if you see something else, take those pictures because those are really, really useful. And you very well know, um, be running a wildlife NGO, that, you know, having those images can really um, help in convincing policymakers or communicating an issue, um, you know, and speaking of animals. So um, I really think that's important. And I just feel, I hope more and more photographers take pictures of the not so pretty stuff as well. I think I've visited your Banagata Bear uh, Rescue Center, but not the Delhi one. So uh, hopefully, uh, once we can start traveling again and things, I'll definitely want to come back. Definitely. We'd love that. Kalyan, you're also a part of the Peepley Project, which uh, dives deep into underreported and untouched topics and issues that are faced by society. How's that format of storytelling working for you? And how has this influenced your work? I mean, you know very well in conservation, it's not black and white. No issue is black, right? Uh, you can just say that, oh, humans are bad, elephants good, elephants, you know, kind of thing. So I really wanted to break that narrative, you know, because um, people have a very naive view of what conservation should be, ought to be. And, and most of the people who are in a position of power uh, tend to be people like us. Actually, we are also, uh, in some sense, privileged, city-born, we live in a fancy apartment and all that. But to conserve elephants, you know, it's, it's that villager who sits who has a small two acre plot next to a national park. The problem that he faces, we will never understand, right? So, so Peebly project was essentially that to kind of have a long format, multi-part narrative of an issue. So I've done two projects. One was of course the human elephant conflict um, that, that happened in Karnataka. 
uh, and and also the other one was with the shepherds in Maharashtra who live alongside wolves and their relationship with the land and grasslands. So it needed like a long form, ten fifteen articles, short clips, videos to communicate the issue. You know, and and I wanted to uh, dwell into that. So that was really the um, aim of the project, and and I think we four of us we got together and started it. Uh, unfortunately, um, we didn't get uh, you know funding to continue, so we kind of had to uh, <laughs> scale it back. But uh, it was a great project. That was amazing, Kalyan. Thank you for sharing that. We'll now move to our next segment of this show. It's called the Elephant in the Room. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, which are quite random, and you have to answer them as quickly as you can. Are you ready? All right. This is like a buzzer round. <laughs> what is your spirit animal? Definitely elephants. Who is your favorite photographer or filmmaker? Photographer in India, definitely Dittiman Mukherjee. I think he's he's really the one of the best uh, photographer. And and in terms of filmmaking, Sandesh Kadu. Which species would you say is currently on top of your list that you really wish to photograph, but you haven't yet been able to do that? Red panda. Which is the most unique creature? You photograph till date. Probably the purple frog. I think considering the the weirdness of the frog is probably the weirdest thing. Yeah. Kalyan, have you ever been in a situation where the animal you were photographing chased you to a point that you would ever consider holding a camera again? Yeah, unfortunately, that's also elephants too. You know, I've worked a lot of elephants, and uh, normally in a vehicle it's fine, but you know, I was on foot in these tea estates and all that, and and the times where I had to kind of grab the actually once I even left the camera and like okay. You know, I need to get out of there. But just to kind of reframe that question, the animal that gives me the most amount of trouble in the field is the ticks. <laughs> it's oh yes, ticks can be extremely painful, excruciatingly irritating, and uh, oh yeah, I've had my fair share of tick bites when I was working in the jungle. Kalyan, would you rather be able to talk to all animals as a superpower or be able to fly? Fly, I think. Um, because i think some animals you can communicate i mean you're not talking making conversations but uh, you can kind of at least get your intent across um, but yeah i would love to fly one day <laughs> as a wildlife photographer which is the most uncomfortable position you've ended up in to take that perfect shot i think my worst shoot till day that way was in uh, belavadar uh, this is a couple of years ago i was filming black buck and the hide was right at their legging side. So, um, and, and if I'd walk there, they would spook, get spooked. So I had to get in the hide before uh, 6 a.m. And I could only exit after dark because I didn't want the black book to know I was there. Uh, so this is Gujarat in March, you know, so you can imagine uh, the heat. It just used to kill me, you know, um, just sitting there for 12 hours. And, and animals are not like, finally the animal would do something for one hour. So that was really the hardest thing because I would just be, dripping in sweat and you know uh, sitting there for 12 hours i did that for a month wow 30 days sitting in a hide to get that perfect shot which was maybe one hour of footage a day yeah exactly that's incredible it shows the the kind of persistence you have and i think it'll also inspire others that you know patience and persistence is what gets you that perfect shot well last one if it were up to you what would be the first action you would take to curb the impact of climate change? I really think that um, we need a, uh, see actually what this COVID-19 times have shown is that the world can quickly get together to solve a global crisis. I really think that if our governments across the world realize that climate change is as big an issue, you know, um, and we're gonna face a um, lot of issues because of that, I really hope that the governments wake up to it and collectively can do something about that was great, Kalyan. Thank you for joining us today. It was great to have you on the show. Do you have a message for our viewers? Yeah, I really think that Wildlife SO is one of the best animal welfare organizations in the country. And I do hope that uh, people will continue to contribute uh, in whatever generous way possible to save all the animals that uh, you're kindly doing. Well, stay in touch and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, really nice catching up and I hope we will meet in person very soon. Take care, stay home and stay safe. Bye. <laughs>